Good afternoon, everybody, um, and I uh, wanted to say thank you to ARM. Uh, this is our first time presenting uh, at an ARM conference, and uh, we're absolutely thrilled to be here. So at Affinity Therapeutics, uh, we're unlocking the potential of T cells against oncogenic driving mutations. So in terms of who we are as a company, we are a cell therapy company that's engineering T cells um, against uh, a class of targets called oncogenic drivers, and I'll go into some more specifics uh, in the subsequent slides. So we were founded in August 2020 as a spin out of the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center in Seattle, Washington, and more specifically the lab of Phil Greenberg. And uh, in the subsequent two years, we've built the company in two places. Our headquarters is in Watertown, Massachusetts, which is in the greater Boston area. And we also have a research site in Seattle, Washington as well to stay close to our co-founders of the Fred Hutch. Right now, we're at 90 employees, and we are a privately held uh, biotechnology company that is venture funded. Our lead venture investors are Vita Ventures and leased by Bayer, uh, and to date, uh, we have raised $190 million uh, US dollars uh, to pursue our pipeline. So why are we targeting oncogenic driving mutations and why with TCR? So I'll go over this um, in this uh, talk today as to why we feel uh, these are exactly the right targets. Uh, paired with the right molecular biology and cell engineering at this time to really address the core of solid tumor biology and hopefully move the needle uh, in these um, highly intractable diseases for the patients that we serve. So as most of us know, cancer cells are highly dependent and actually addicted to a class of mutations called driver mutations. So unlike some mutations that I like to call it passenger mutations that kind of go along for the ride uh, in cancer and are highly changeable and therefore you know, can give rise to tumor escape or uh, tumor heterogeneity. heterogeneity. Uh, the class of oncogenic driver mutations uh, is really essential to the survival of the metastatic cells themselves. So they're highly functionally addicted and without these driver mutations, they're unable to survive. Um, so therefore, you know, this is a very robust target uh, to go after such in that there is not a lot of tumor escape. Um, and also um, for these class of cells, um, due to the addiction to these drivers, um, eradication of this mutation or the cells carrying this mutation, mutation will theoretically eradicate the core of the cancer itself. So in terms of KRAS, these mutations represent approximately 30% of all solid tumors, um, and these include tumors such as non-small cell lung cancer, colorectal cancers, pancreatic cancers, ovarian cancers, and um, certain subtypes of breast cancer. So uh, to date, there has been some good movement in terms of small molecule inhibitors and their ability to address uh, certain mutations of KRAS, namely KRAS G12C. Um, so in this class of mutations, um, there's two approved drugs currently on the market, Lumacras from Amgen as well as Crizati from Mirati, uh, both of which have been approved in the past year uh, through accelerated means. So, you know, great news uh, to de-risk this target, but there's certainly a lot of work still to be done and many other mutations to address that are not addressable uh, by a small molecule inhibitor um, due to some quirks, of course, uh, in chemical targeting of the moiety. So you can see here, um, this is uh, the incidence of uh, KRAS mutations uh, in solid tumors uh, annually. Um, so as I just mentioned, the small molecule inhibitors, Lumacras and Crizati targeting KRAS G12C with approximately 56,000 um, patient annual population uh, that is addressable. However, unfortunately, uh, G12C is one of the more rare mutations uh, in the KRAS family. And the two most prevalent mutations are KRAS G12D as well as KRAS G12V. Uh, so D for aspartic acid and V for valine. So here, the total addressable uh, potential mark is 185,000 uh, KRAS G12V patients and 139,000 KRAS G12D patients. So, um, you know, we feel at Affinity Therapeutics that we will be able to address um, both KRAS G12V and KRAS G12D uh, with T cell receptor therapies. 
So how are we putting it together? I think we've learned in cell therapy over the years uh, to finally address solid tumors uh, with a TCR cell therapy. Um, at Affinity Therapeutics, we're doing it based on three platforms that we've developed over the past two years. The first platform is what we call our Taylor platform, and this is our TCR discovery platform. So in terms of how we go about finding CCRs at Affinity Therapeutics, uh, we actually start with healthy donor material, which is somewhat different than what has come in the field in the past. So we do isolate our TCRs from healthy human donors as opposed to affinity maturing our TCRs ex vivo. So by starting with healthy human donors, we ensure that our candidate TCRs have cleared negative selection in the thymic medulla, a key compartment in the thymus that ensures deletion of autoreactive T cells. Once we found our TCRs this way, we of course uh, optimize them. Uh, every uh, T cell discovery run that we do, um, we generally find about 80 to 100 TCR candidates. The next go through uh, a funnel um, to find our drug, uh, our drug development candidate. So what we do next is we evaluate the cell killing potential against various cancer cell lines, of course. And then we also perform what's known as alanine scanning and X scanning to identify any off-target peptides um, that our TCRs may be recognizing. We next culture uh, with a panel of BLCL cells representing a diverse range of HLA types to ensure that there's no activity against allelic variants of the MHC. And then also finally, of course, we screen for activity against normal tissue using iPSC-derived lines of different lineages. So that's our Taylor platform. Uh, next, I'd like to describe what we call our TUNE platform, which is our cell engineering and synthetic biology platform, where we deploy uh, state-of-the-art uh, cellular engineering in order to enhance uh, the survivability of our cells in a hostile tumor environment, as well as increase the potential durability response when our once our drugs are in vivo. Um, so we are here, we have a unique suite of switch receptors, co-receptors, uh, and other methods of really orchestrating uh, United CD4 and CD8 TCR T cell response uh, in vivo. Um, so I'm going to describe one of these uh, switch receptors um, next in the manufacturing slide, but I also do want to mention that unique to our products is that um, all of our products uh, include a CD8 alpha-beta co-receptor, which means that the CD4 cells uh, also express a CD8 alpha-beta co-receptor. And this is in order to um, provide kind of cytokine support uh, to our CD8 cells uh, once in the tumor microenvironment, as well as um, to uh, start pro-inflammatory signaling to attract other T cells and NK cells uh, into the tumor microenvironment uh, once our drug product is resonant uh, there as well. Uh, next, um, and certainly not last, since I'm a manufacturing person, uh, is the Thrive platform, and this is how we actually make our drug products. Um, so here, we um, combine uh, a couple state-of-the-art technologies. One of them, of course, is in, in vivo gene, et oh, sorry, one of them is gene editing, um, where we're partnered with Metagenome uh, to use type 5 CRISPR-Cas systems to knock out um, the endogenous TCR, therefore giving rise um, and the ability of our synthetic TCR to be um, more highly expressed on the cell surface. And um, we also utilize uh, non-viral uh, as well as viral uh, gene delivery methods, depending on the program. And finally, uh, we're very focused uh, on robust uh, manufacturing uh, across the board. So, um, you know, right now we're very um, pleased with um, how we're doing in manufacturing. We're halfway through tech transfer um, to our manufacturing partner, Elevate Bio, uh, in Waltham, Massachusetts, for our lead wholly owned program. And um, so far, we've done uh, 10 full-scale runs, uh, showing very high yields of our TCR T cells, which I'll go over next. OK, so as I just mentioned, our Thrive process uh, is a 10-day autologous TCR manufacturing process 
uh, whereby we start with crowd-preserved leukophoresis products from our patients. So on the first day of biomanufacturing uh, is where we do our cell thawing as well as immunomagnetic selection for the CD4 and CD8 cell population. And we do try to maintain a certain ratio of CD4 to CD8 cells all throughout biomanufacturing. Um, our main goal in the process design was to uh, arrive at both a high cell yield as well as to have the preponderance of cells that we manufacture very fit and youthful, namely to have a, a large cohort of central memory cells as well as naive and T cell um, stem cell memory cells. So uh, we've achieved uh, exactly this after 10 process development runs. And uh, right now, as I mentioned, we're uh, in tech transfer and starting engineering runs uh, at our CDMO. So uh, in terms of the process, going back to the first day of manufacturing the GMP suite, uh, we do activate the cells. And on 24 hours later, we do a lentiviral transduction. Um, and in terms of uh, what's shown here, this is for our lead wholly owned asset called Affinity 211. And this particular product, um, it's a KRAS G12V A11 TCR um, that is uh, you know, expressed along with two other uh, transgenes, um, the transgenes for the CD8 alpha beta co-receptor, as well as the transgene uh, for a switch receptor called FAST41BB. So this switch receptor is novel in that um, it, uh, is, uh, it gives a dominant negative signal uh, to the cells in the presence of fast ligand. As many of you know, fast ligand is an inhibitory signal and an apoptotic signal in the tumor microenvironment, um, which causes T cells to uh, senesce and die once in the hostile tumor environment. However, since the uh, FAST has been appended to a 4-1-BB signal, um, transmembrane trans signal, uh, we're now able to turn uh, a dust signal into a proliferation signal, uh, potentially allowing these cells uh, to proliferate uh, very strongly once inside the TME uh, and exposed to uh, endogenous fast ligand. So in terms of uh, this particular product, uh, a single promoter drives all five chains um, in terms of the TCR alpha beta chain, the CD8 alpha beta co-receptor chains, and then the FAST41BB ligand. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, we achieve about 50 to 60 percent transduction efficiency without um, any transduction enhancers. With transduction enhancers, 70 to 80 percent transduction efficiency. Uh, we next ex vivo culture the cells um, until day 10, when we harvest formerly fill cryopreserve uh, for shipment to multiple clinical sites. In terms of our cell yields, um, our average cell yield currently is 60 to 80 billion uh, T cells, total T cells at the end of the process, of which uh, 30 to 40 billion are drug substance, namely TCR positive T cells. Here's our current pipeline. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, our lead wholly owned asset is Affinity 211. Uh, which is uh, the KRAS G12V asset for an A11 HLA um, that includes uh, the FAST41BB switch receptor. We also have an investigator sponsored IND coming up with a Fred Hutch called Affinity 111, and this um, is the A11 KRAS G12V uh, without the FAST41BB um, switch receptor. And uh, the remainder of our pipeline um, focuses on. Other KRAS variants such as KRAS G12D and G12C, and then also um, other oncogenic driver mutations, namely P53 and PIK3CA. So here's our clinical trial plans. Um, we pl are planning to file two INDs in the second half of this year. Um, all basket trials looking at non-small cell line cancer, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and a, a tissue agnostic bucket as well. So uh, these are dose ranging studies, of course, in phase 1A. Um, and then uh, we expect to be able to hopefully seamlessly transition to phase 1B2 um, that we would open uh, at sites not only in the US, but also in the EU. Um, in uh, order to um, have our cohort expansions and be part of our registrational study. 
So, um, you know, in preparation for that, uh, you know, we are looking at um, uh, potentially, uh, you know, collecting and freezing liquid products here in, this, in the EU and potentially shipping over to the U.S. for manufacturing or even manufacturing here. I uh, haven't quite decided yet, so any of you in that business, uh, please do hit me up. We'd love to hear from you as we plan for the European trials as well. Okay, I have 13 seconds left, um, so uh, I had some really cool data. We ran out of time, so... Um, Oh, I'm just gonna flip through this really quick, uh, but it's really cool. Uh, this is my favorite slide, because it shows the effect of the CD8s and CD4 separately and together uh, in terms of uh, continuous tumor rechallenge uh, in preclinical models. Uh, aside from that, um, this is our outlook as a company. Over the next couple of years, uh, we're planning to move uh, forward with uh, three to four more INGs through 2024 and then uh, do crossover slash IPO financing at the end of this year or early next year. And uh, again, uh, thrilled to be part of ARM. Um, and uh, thank you again for uh, having us today on your time. <laughs>